So a few things that I want to say about the current state of play on budget negotiations and averting default. So for starters, this is a manufactured crisis, plain and simple. That's what we're seeing currently. That's what we've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks, a manufactured crisis. And don't take our word for it. Just listen to members of the House Freedom Caucus. They've been very honest about this and are now openly, they're saying the quiet thing out loud, referring to the full faith and credit of the United States as a hostage. But I, I do want to be clear here. Averting default is the responsibility of every single member of Congress. Think about what's at stake here. And that's what we've been doing. We've been laying out for weeks, for months, what is at stake. A default would have catastrophic impacts in every single part of this country, whether you're in a red state or in a blue state. It doesn't matter. Every single part of the country. We're talking about millions of jobs lost, devastated retirement accounts, and a recession. We're, we've also heard some House Republicans refer to preventing default as the only concession they are willing to make. But preventing a catastrophic default is not a concession. It's their job, period. And let's be clear about what Republicans are demanding in exchange for doing their job and preventing a default. Earlier this year, they put forward an extreme package of devastating cuts that would slash supporting support for education, law enforcement, food assistance. The list goes on and on and on and on by what now would be about 30 percent. That is not at all what the American people want. That is not what they deserve. That is not what they're asking for. And the president has made clear, he's made this very clear that that is not happening on his watch. House Republicans have said we need to make these cuts in the name of fiscal responsibility and deficit reduction. But that's not what this is about. That's never been what this is about for them. Because even as they fight to gut investments, in hardworking families. They want to turn around and protect tax breaks skewed to the wealthy and corporations. And guess what? Just last week, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office said those tax cuts would add $3.5 trillion to the debt over the next decade. And don't forget, don't forget this. It was under President Trump, the last president, not President Biden, that America's debt increased by 40%. Again, by 40% under the last president. During President Biden's first two years in office, he cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion. Now, folks, that's a record. And in March, he released a plan that would reduce the deficit by another nearly $3 trillion over 10 years. Not by slashing programs hardworking families can count on, but by cutting wasteful spending on special interest and by asking the wealthy and big corporations to begin paying their fair share, including closing loopholes. Those are the contrasting vision that these negotiations started with. That's where we began with the negotiations. Now look, the president and the speaker have agreed. They both have said this. They both have said they agreed that default is not an option. It is off the table. The speaker himself has publicly acknowledged that for any agreement to pass the House, the Senate, and to reach the desk of the president, it's going to need support from Democrats. That is the reality that we're in. The president's team will continue to negotiate in good faith to reach a reasonable bipartisan budget agreement. That's what the president and the speaker agreed to, and that's what they tasked their teams with reaching from this outset. And that's the only, the only way to move forward here on behalf, this is on behalf of American families, on behalf of the American people. So if I've left you with any doubt about House Republicans' priorities in just a few hours, all you got to do is check yourself. House Republicans will vote on a resolution to block President Biden's plan to provide up to $20,000 in student debt relief to borrowers, who, uh, most of whom uh, make less than $75,000 a year. 
The president's plan is a good one. It's a popular one. And it will help prevent borrowers from default when loan payments restart this summer. The choice House Republicans make today will send a clear message to their constituents. Let's take a look. Will Marjorie Taylor Greene, who had $183,000 of her own business loans forgiven, vote to deny debt relief to the 92,000 student borrowers she represents? Will, will Representative Vern Buchanan, who had over $2.3 million of business loans forgiven, vote to deny student debt relief for 95,000 of his own constituents? To the more than 40 million eligible student borrowers who are eagerly waiting to learn about the fate of their debt relief, I urge you to tune in today's vote and to today's vote to watch which Republican lawmakers shamelessly vote against debt relief for you after having their own loans forgiven. And know this, President Biden won't stand for it. He will not stand for it, and he will veto this bill. Because let's be clear, this is not about cutting wasteful spending for Republicans, and it never has been. The same Republican lawmakers objecting to student debt relief are refusing, are refusing to cut billions of dollars in handouts to big oil. They even had their own loans forgiven, as I just laid out, and you just saw on the chart to my left here. Meanwhile, President Biden has reduced the deficit $1.7 trillion and put forward a plan to cut wasteful spending and end the deficit by another $3 trillion over the next decade. 